Okay, today I'll be explaining 10.3 solids. Now, as you can see here, we have three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Now, the particles in the solid are, like, more closely together and have a less, like, moving energy. Like, they're moving, like, in less moving energy, like, uh, than the other uh, states. Now, in liquid, the particles are a little far apart and they're moving in a little high speed. Then, in the gas, particles are far away from each other and they're moving in a really high speed, which means they have a high kinetic energy. Now, solids have a definite shape and a definite volume. Now, solids are hard to diffuse, which they have like low diffusion rates, and they're very hard to compress, and they do not flow like, that, like gases or liquids. Then, particles in a solid are packed closely together. Now, the attractive forces tend to hold the particles of a solid in relatively fixed positions. Now, solids are more ordered than liquids and are much ordered than gases, as in the particles. Now we have two types of solids. The first type is the crystalline solids. Now, crystalline, sol uh, crystalline solids are solids that consist of crystal. Now, crystal is a substance in which the particles are arranged orderly, geometrically, and in a repeating pattern. So as you can see here, we have a diagram of the particles in crystalline solids. They are really close to each other, and they are like, a geometric, like in a geometric pattern, in a geometric repeating pattern. And examples include sugar, salt, and diamonds. Then we move on to the second type of crystalline solids, uh, crystalline solids, which is the amorphous solid. It is one in which the particles are arranged randomly. So as you can see here, they are like in a random arrangement. And examples include graphite, coke, not the soft drink. Uh, it's a form of uh, carbon. Uh, then gla uh, glass, plastic, and coal. Now definite shape and definite volume. Now solids can maintain a definite shape without changing the shape of the container. Now crystalline solids, uh, crystalline solids are geometrically regular. Now the volume of a solid changes only slightly with a change in temperature or pressure. Now solids have a definite volume because their particles are packed together. So if they, whatever they ask, why do solids have a definite volume, it's because their particles are packed closely together. Now, definite melting point. Now, melting is the physical change of a solid to a liquid by the addition of energy as heat. For example, as an ice, which is a solid, and when you heat it up in the form of, like, when you, yeah, like, when you add energy, such as we heat it up, it changes to water, which is the liquid state. Now, melting point is the temperature at which a uh, solid becomes a liquid. Now, at this temperature, the kinetic energies of the particles within the solid overcome the attractive forces holding them together. Now, amorphous solids have no definite melting point. For example, now, amorphous solids have no definite melting point, such as glass and plastic. Now, the higher density results from the fact that the particles of a solid are more closely packed than those of a liquid or gas. Now, solids can be considered incompressible. Now, they also have the property of low rate of diffusion. Now, the rate of diffusion is millions of times slower in solids than in liquids. Now, finally, we move into the formative assessment. Now, first question is, describe the solid state according to the kinetic molecular, molecular theory. The answer is, solid state particles vibrate in place, preventing diffusion particles due to the attractive forces between them. Now, the small distance between particles causes incompressibility compressibility and definite volume and shape. Now the second question, we only have two questions in this part. What is the difference between amorphous solid and crystalline solid? It's simply that the amorphous solids consist of particles that are arranged randomly and the crystalline solids consist of particles that are arranged orderly. So we're done from this part of the lesson and I'll be continuing the other part of the lesson in part two talking about the uh, crystal structure of solids. Thank you. Thank you.